talk further about the Patanjali phenomenon, I have with me Mr. Rohit Ori and Mr. Devangshu Datta. Welcome to Brandstand. So, Ayurvedic products have been there since for a, for a long, long time. But none of them have been a rage as big as Patanjali. So, uh, Rohit, why do you think is the reason behind the super success of Patanjali? I think the first and foremost thing about Patanjali is really about not just what it's done now, but the fact that it had a ground uh, build, right, for a period of time. Uh, Baba Ramdev's whole thing about yoga and building uh, awareness about Ayurveda in, in the country. And then it, the, the products came as a natural extension of his, um, uh, you know, efforts for a period of time. So if you look at it, there are a few reasons why uh, the thing is actually working. One is authentic Ayurveda. Right? And I think all the Ayurvedic brands have actually Bollywoodized themselves, right? So they use film stars, you know, and, and, and talk about Ayurveda as if it is just cool fad kind of thing versus what he's actually gone down to do is really about talking about the authenticity of Ayurveda and the authentic ingredients that he actually uses in that. The second big thing is that he's the, the, the face behind the brand and he, in many ways he stands for yoga he stands for ayurveda and he stands for actually having beaten you know if you look at him he hasn't changed over the the years so in many ways people feel that you know he he is the living proof of the efficacy of what he's actually uh, propagating right just to overlay on uh, what you said there have been other brands which have used ayurveda uh, you know rico has been there tabar has been there various other brands have been there Vedanath, etc. Uh, it was seen as uh, fuddy duddy. It was seen as something which you know the older generations did, but it was no longer cool. It's been cool to adopt Western brands. In the last 10-15 years, I think uh, we found a going back to the roots amongst the young consumers as well. Is the under 35 segment which is driving a lot of the demand, which is uh, the resurgence for Ayurvedic and herbal products back to nature. This is not the first time that uh, big MNC, FNCG firms have been at the receiving end of bright sparks like we've had Nirmal in the past and Ghari. So why do you think these fancy companies with the best of minds get outwitted by these homegrown setups? I think one of the things that uh, MNCs are doing and I think perhaps um, uh, to a fault really is really uh, you know, being completely guided by shareholders' interests, right? So, so a lot of it is about um, uh, value extraction from from the business versus value creation. And I think uh, what uh, 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 you know, Baba Ramdev and Patanjali are doing is really about you know, it's 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 not about uh, what's the value to the shareholders is really about what's the value to consumers. The the founder is invested in time, energy, money in the venture and that makes a whole lot of difference uh, when you're, you're trying to grab you know percentages and fractions of percentages of market share uh, in a market which is supposed to have been many of the products in fact are supposed to have been stable uh, products where you know you really fight for fractions of market share they've created uh, multiple fractions in fact they've taken growth out of places where people thought there was no growth rural market is another area where uh, patanjali has a big advantage because they're they claim to be relatively cheaper than their competitors. However, when we uh, spoke to uh, Baba Ramdev about their a and spends, he says that he's not spending as much. So do you think that can work against the brand? His communication channel is completely different, right? So what he uses is he uses uh, yoga instructors, right? So they go from house to house, they teach you yoga and they teach you, you know, how to use some of his products. Right? If you look at his chain, actually there are uh, his retail outlets have a, it's like a chikitsalya. You actually meet the doctor, he gives you some, uh, understands your problem, gives you one or two medicines. While you're going out, you, you go into the shop and you find 20 other things to buy and you pick up regular use stuff as well. You know, so he may have prescribed 100 rupees, but you pick up 1000 rupees when you go out. So the thing is that the model is, is, is very robust and I think it's a, Show shot success model in, in rural uh, markets as well. So I'm sure uh, all the other CMOs out there have a big lesson here to learn from Baba Ramdev. What do you think the CMOs today can learn from uh, uh, Patanjali? Uh, the one big thing that, uh, at least for brands, there are many brands who are already in the Ayurvedic space who are under first threat, right? Because those brands need to reclaim authenticity. 
right? Because if you don't reclaim authenticity, you're going to be, you, you can't be more cosmetic than cosmetic, right? You can't be also Ayurvedic, right? So you have to stand for something. And I think that whole thing of going back to the roots, right? Going back to what you stand for, very, very important for, for brands. Coming back to authentic, anchor, solid, you can always trust it. It's, these are very important values. Most uh, FMCG and fashion products are orienting and have oriented the consumer externally. It's about looking good because you are moving a certain company. But the whole philosophy, uh, the, the whole system of philosophy that we have built a culture on for the last whatever several thousands of years, I would say there's an uh, you know a, an anchor in that whole system. So from that point of view. Any brand which ignores that is kind of missing the point. Right? So it's a going back to the roots. And I think if you look at the whole movement across the board and among the young, it's not just about the products that you use, it's about the lifestyle that you lead. Right? And that's something which Patanjali is using, uh, has used very well. The second part which I think we kind of uh, tend to miss out on is uh, the value of time. When you want to grow a brand, you do need to give it time. Patanjali today is talking about 5,000 crores of turnover. Last year they were 2,500 crores. The previous year they were about 1,200 crores. They were about. They've doubled their turnover in the last three, four years. But before they were, they were before that they were significantly smaller. But that's not to say that they only began business five years ago. They've been in the business of selling products for a long time. Maybe not at the same scale. Maybe not at the same level of sophistication. But they've been doing it for a long time. If you haven't, uh, you know, sunk the foundations deep you're not going to get that skyscraper as high. Let's see whether he uh, reaches the 10,000 mark, which he claims he will do this year. So let's wait and watch how that turns out. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you. It's time now for a short break, but we'll be back soon. Stay tuned.